let's get into uh, the first key concept. And I'm talking about the, these themes as they apply to representing hands. Um, and mostly that, that involves representation for yourself, not for your opponent. But we'll talk a little bit about what you can, how you can use this knowledge to read your opponents as well. Uh, the size of the pot is one of the biggest influencers of what range that you can you can represent or what range you are representing by taking a certain line. So, for example, you know if the pot size happens to be bloated in in a very simple example to say 400 big blinds and you're betting like 350 into that uh, 350 big blinds into that, then you're clearly representing a lot of strength because in our 100 big blind online poker world, uh, that is an extraordinarily large bet in an extraordinarily rare situation. So that's just one clear example. Um, on the other hand, if it's like a limped pot with just the two blinds in the pot and there's only two big blinds out there and you just min bet on the flop, then you could literally be representing anything, you know, d despite the fact that it's it's a half pot bet and, and you're betting at an uncontested pot where you didn't raise preflop and so on. Um, pot size is just a plain factor that operates independently of a lot of other things for the most part. Um, one of the things that will interfere with it is, is game flow, right? If you're constantly playing like 200 big blind pots because you're deep and you're playing heads up or something, then obviously pot size by itself is not that great of a measure of exactly what kind of strength you're representing. Um, but for the most part, especially in 6 max and 9 max 100 big blind play, pot size is a very strong and independent indicator of strength and something that you need to utilize um, to properly represent hands. And the basic concept here is that the more money that you're willing to risk, the more strength you're representing, right? If the pot's very big and you're betting very big, in general, it looks very strong. And in addition to that, which is a very simple and straightforward concept and I don't think anyone needs to go into in great detail, um, there's implied threat to any large bet you make. Um, in particular, if you make a bet that is very close to pot, and brings the pots, the total pot size on the next street to like more than half a buy-in. So for example, if you bet, if it's like 20 big blinds in the pot and you bet 20 big blinds, uh, you just mash pot and someone calls, then all of a sudden there's gonna be 60 big blinds in the pot and generally with 100 big blind stacks, there's very little play left after that. So it's not necessarily at the point where the pot is already 60 big blinds that you be, begin to represent strength. It's by volunteering to inflate the pot to that size where you begin to represent strength. And using that, utilizing that implied threat of playing a huge pot can sometimes work to your advantage to, to push small edges to what can be substantial edges. For example, if you're playing against someone who in, gener who in, this, in the current situation probably has some sort of a decent hand, probably is not looking for an excuse to fold and in general is not really looking for an excuse to fold. So, you know, someone who's a regular, who's a little bit sticky, who doesn't really like to give up decent hands, um, you know, someone who's a little suspicious and so on. If you bet like two thirds of the pot against that person with that hand that is decent, you're unlikely to get a fold very often. But if you bet pot, there are certain people who, although they fit that general description, will start to reevaluate when you make that bet size and will all of a sudden fold a substantially larger chunk of their range because of the fact that not only did you bet pot, but they have to consider what's going to happen on the next street if I peel this. Do I really want to stack off here? Um, and when, whenever the answer is no, especially if, if you already go into the current street of betting, knowing that your opponent probably doesn't want to stack off with whatever he has, although he probably doesn't want to fold it yet either, then leveraging that implied threat can get you a lot more folds. And that's just one very basic and straightforward concept of how pot size, and in addition to that, um, the sizing of your bets as they create a larger pot size can dramatically change the outcome of a hand. Um, so the gist of what I'm getting at here is that a little bit of extra money added on to your bet size that you choose can cause a big shift in someone's perception. Uh, I think that the note that's on the screen is possibly a little bit unclear, but I hope I'm making that clear by saying it. A small amount of extra money can change what it is you're representing in your opponent's eyes so much that his play dramatically changes. And the difference between betting, say, like two-thirds pot and full pot is often only a few big blinds, but the difference in perception as a proportion of how mathematically different your um, actual sizing is in terms of your EV and such is dramatic. It's, it's very disproportionate. So do keep in mind that sometimes just a little bit of money in one direction or the other, like, like betting under half the pot instead of two-thirds pot or betting full pot instead of two-thirds pot, both of those ideas uh, can 
dramatically change what it is that you're representing. And it's really important to be aware of that because in some situations, it's really only appropriate to bet full pot or to bet less than half the pot or something um, if you want to achieve proper optimal results from your play. Uh, and in those situations, a lot of people still just bet two-thirds pot like they always do. And, and they, they're kind of few and far between, but they're really important to play optimally.